And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at The Castles of Burgundy, a Steffen Feld game uh, printed by Ravensburger and Aaliyah, and a game from a designer that I really enjoy. Um, this is going to be a game about rolling dice and taking actions. You're going to be using those dice to get tiles and place tiles onto your own player board in order to try and score victory points through clever placement of tiles, uh, optimal placement of tiles, and finishing areas before your opponents. So why don't we take a look at what you get inside of this box, how the game plays, and then I'll come back here and sum it all up with my final thoughts. So here we are looking at the main board for the Castles of Burgundy, and the first thing you're going to note is that we have a lot of different little tiles. You'll see we have blue and gray and green and black and all kinds of different tiles, and these are going to represent different types of buildings or different, different types of areas you can build in the game. And at the beginning of each round, you're going to populate this board. You'll see the board has numbers on it. Uh, three, two, and four. And depending on how many players you have, you're going to fill in only the appropriate spaces. So if you have three, you'll fill in all of the two and threes. If you have four, you'll fill in all of them. And you're going to take from these stacks in the beginning of each round, you're going to fill in the board. So why don't I do that real quick, and then I'll describe the game a little bit more. Okay. So now that we've filled up the board, you can see kind of how the layout works. This is set up for a four-player game, so I've filled in all of the spots. We also have player markers for uh, turn order and also for keeping track of score. And then we have some goods tiles, which will be available to players throughout the game and are going to be a means of getting money and scoring points. Now, all of these different tiles represent different buildings or different types of things you can build. Uh, we have blue, which are ships. We have light green, which are going to be animals. We have these tannish ones, which are going to be buildings. We have dark green, which are castles, and we have yellow, which are going to be kind of a special modifier type of building, which are going to give you bonuses for certain things. And then we have gray, which are mines, which will earn you money each round. And the goal is, to, is going to be to get these tiles from this board by rolling dice and place them onto a player board. And players will be taking actions in order to do so. Now, each player is going to have a pair of dice. Uh, this is the green player's dice. You get two. Uh, and every turn you're basically going to be rolling this. There's going to be five rounds and five turns in each round. So over the course of the game you're going to get 25 turns per player. And at the start of each turn what you're going to do is you're going to roll these two dice and you're going to place them over on your player board. I'll show you the player board momentarily, but I rolled a four and a six. Additionally, the first player is going to roll a white die uh, and this one got a two and they're going to take the first one of these goods markers, which you'll see uh, just depict a good in a color and a number on them and they're going to put it in the corresponding area on the board. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. They would put this over in two since a two is rolled. Then, starting with the first player, they're going to take two actions using their two dice that they rolled. And these actions are several different things. The first thing you can do is you can use one of your dice, uh, either one, in order to take a tile from the board. So if I wanted to take a tile from the board, I could use either a four or a six. And that means I could take either from the four area or from the six area. Or if I happen to have some workers, which you'll see look like this, uh, they show minus one, plus one, I could use them to modify my die roll by minus one or plus one in order to place them somewhere else. But let's say I wanted to use a four. I would use my four, setting it aside, and I would be able to take any of these tiles from the four region. So I could take a mine, which will get me money, or a ship, which will, which will change my spot in the turn order and let me get some goods or a building, which this one is a church, which would uh, actually let me get another tile from the board, or I could take some cows. Uh, now the cows are kind of an interesting tile. You'll see that it shows four cows on it. And for placing those on the board, you're actually going to get victory points equal to however many cows are in the area that you place. So if this was my first cow, I'd get four points. But if I got that tile placed and then later on I placed another cow tile, I would get the total amount of cows in points that I had on the board in that area. Anyhow, I would play my four and let's say I wanted to take this ship. I would take that ship and I would place it onto my player board. And they would take that piece and they'd just simply set it into one of their three spots on their player board. Now, let's go over this player board real quickly. At the top here you have an area for silverlings, which are going to be money, and I'll explain their purpose later. Uh, and then you have three areas for goods. You start the game with three goods, and these are all three different color goods, but if they had been similar colors, they'd be stacked on top of one another, and there'd be more spaces for goods available. 
but more about goods later. So when you take a tile from the board, anytime you take a tile from the board, it goes in this area here and is basically in preparation for going out onto your player board. Now, the second option of what you can do with your dice is you can use them to place tiles onto the board. Now, you'll see that this ship here only corresponds to these blue here. So ships always have to go on blue. You have to match colors on your board. And there's a six here, a one, a two, a five, a four, and another one. But anytime you place a tile on your board, it has to be next to a tile that you've already got on there. And everyone starts with a green castle in the center, center of their board. So you can see my choices for putting this ship onto the board are a two or a five. Well, I have a six, not a two or a five. But I do have a worker. So I could turn my worker in and change this die to a five, and then I could use that five to place this ship out onto the board. Placing that ship onto my player board would allow me to move up one in turn order. So I would be the new first player if I wasn't already first player. And additionally, it would let me take one goods from any one of these goods areas on the board, not the uh, remaining goods for the round, but any one that had been placed. So I could take this pink one and put it on my board. However, I do not have any free spots, so I would not get that benefit. A third thing you may do with your dice, let's say that a player hadn't taken one of those actions, they could trade in any one die to get two workers. So you can get rid of a die if you have nothing better to do to take two workers, and you'll have those for a later point in order to modify your die rolls. The final thing you can do with your dice is to use them to sell goods from your player board that I showed you earlier. So let's imagine I had this good on my player board. I would need to have a three, and I could use that three to sell an entire stack of goods. So if I had multiple pink goods on my board stacked up, I could use it to sell them. And I would simply use my three, I would flip all these goods over and put them in my sold good spot on my board, and I would get four victory points per good in a four player game, as well as one silverling overall to add to my board. Now, accumulating those silverings, silverlings lets you do a special action on your turn. Not using dice, you could actually pay two silverlings to take any one of the tiles from this central area. So you'll see all of these other areas have numbers on them, but the central area does not have a number. It has a two silverling thing next to it. You pay two silverlings and you can take any one of these tiles and put it on your player board. So this is a way of getting extra tiles on your turn that may not be available to everyone else. These tiles are special and do not have any special co color coordination. They are black tiles which come out randomly uh, and have all of the different types of tiles in them. So through all of these actions, the goal of the game will be to get these tiles from this board, this main board, onto your player board that I showed you previously. Uh, and you'll see that there are different groupings of tiles. There's blue groupings, and there's a light green grouping. There's a dark green, some yellows, and some tans, and one gray grouping. And filling these in will be the main way of getting points. Now, these buildings, as I said, all have different types of benefits. So the blue are going to be advancing yourself in turn order and getting you goods onto your board. The greens are actually going to let you get special or additional actions anytime you place one of these greens. The yellows are going to be kind of bonus points or uh, bonus modifiers to your, your, maybe your workers or to your dice in some way, shape, or form. These buildings are going to allow you to take more tiles when you place them onto your board or to place an additional tile or to get some type of benefit. Uh, the mines are going to give you money at the beginning of each round, uh, and the animals are going to allow you to uh, essentially score a lot of points for grouping like types of animals. Now in addition to all of those bonuses, filling in these areas gets you points. And when you fill in an entire area, let's say I were to fill in this three blue area here, I would get bonus points for finishing that. And those are going to be printed right here on this player sheet. So first things first, an area of three in size might be hard to see, but an area of three in size when completed gets you six victory points. Additionally, if you look over on this board here, if you finish an area in the first round, which is indicated right here on the board, you get a bonus ten victory points. Additionally, anybody who is the first or second to finish an entire area, so all of the blues, not just one area of blue, but all of the blues, is going to get a special bonus tile. And those are on the board here, so let's say I was the first person to finish all of the blues. I would get this bonus tile, and it's going to have bonus VP printed on it. In a two-player game, you get five points. In a three-player game, you get six points. And in a four-player game, it would be worth seven. The second per place person would be able to get one worth two, three, or four, depending on the number of players. So, through a combination of finishing these areas on your boards in earlier rounds and finishing them before other players, uh, selling your different goods that you managed to pick up through the placement of ships, and through accumulating 
uh, different combinations of groupings of animals and so forth and so on, you're going to be scoring victory points. Uh, by the end of the fifth round, so five turns in one round, then the next round comes out, you would place these new five tiles out. You would clear all of the current uh, hexagon tiles off of the board and replace them with new ones, and you'd go through another round. At the end of those five rounds, whoever has accumulated the most victory points is going to be the winner. So that's the Castles of Burgundy. Uh, and as you might have figured out from all of my previous reviews, if you're a regular watcher, this is my type of game. Uh, a easy, simple Euro game. I mean, it's strategic, but not incredibly hard to learn or, or teach. Uh, there's a lot of different options going on. Do you want to try and finish an area before your opponent? Or do, would you rather just try and get all of the cows so you can group them all together to get a lot of victory points? Um, it plays relatively quickly. Uh, and is really quite easy to teach. I taught my parents and they understood it the first time through. This has been one that's gotten to my table several times over the short period of time that I've owned it, and I really don't have much negative to say about the game, except for that I think the component quality could be a little nicer, uh, which is a relatively minor gripe. The cardboard chips are a little thin. The player mats are thin, but not uh, unusably so. So uh, if you're looking for a good medium, light medium Euro game, uh, one from a designer who has a tendency to use relatively uh, unique designs or unique mechanics or unique implementation of mechanics, check out Castles of Burgundy. It's a game which I would definitely recommend to anyone who is a fan of good light to medium Euro games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at Funagain.com.